Hello and welcome to a festive edition of Sonic Lab. Today we're looking at the Korg Little Bits Synth Kit, or rather that should be the Little Bits Korg Synth Kit, because this is in fact a Little Bits product that has design input from Korg, and essentially it contains all the building blocks to make yourself a little synthesizer, sort of along the lines of a monotron or several monotrons. Let's take a look and see what comes in the box. So here's the box, nice gold livery. We've got 12 bits, circuits in seconds, which I'm guessing is the little bits tagline. Uh, it's worth mentioning, this is, uh, I guess, a UK edition. It's not the global version, and there is a difference. The global version comes with something a little bit different. And that is, if we look on the back, there's this rather nice picture of a sort of console type box that you can adapt it into. And you've got a special uh, little uh, boards here which have holes in which we can put the various modules in and create kind of a synth console. Sadly that's missing from this. This is only available in the global version. I'm guessing what we have is some kind of international or UK specific version. I don't know why there's. I was a bit disappointed actually because I was really looking forward to uh, doing a bit of um, creating a synth out of the box. But never mind, let's take a look and see what you get. Nicely packaged, all eco-friendly. We've got a speaker, a delay unit which is very similar to the I guess is sort of monotron style thing. We've got a filter. We have a random generator, which is random voltage or noise. We have the little power unit here. Uh, we've also got an envelope, which is just attack decay. One oscillator, two oscillators in total. And if we go to the next case up here, it's down so we can see that. We've got a little four-step sequencer, which can either, so we've got four values, which can either run freely via uh, an internal clock or can be advanced by an incoming trigger. We've got a little kind of micro switch style keyboard, one octave, no aftertouch, uh, with an octave select button here. And this also, it can have continual output with pitch or it can have trigger as well. We've got a little splitter lead, these again, they all snap together with little magnets, which you can see just on the side here. We've got a little bit of battery, very nice, power lead, and we've also got a two-channel mixer. So let's get to it and see what we can build. First thing to mention is uh, for the output, uh, the speaker output, while having a speaker also we have a stereo mini jack or a mini jack output so we get an audio out and I've got that uh, on a mini jack which I'm just going to plug in here. So we'll start with that. Speaker's now plugged in. Let's move these over here. Let's take uh, an oscillator, plug that in. These just snap together with a little kind of magnet clip. Really cool way of doing it. Uh, then let's take the step sequencer, drop that on there, get some power on the go, plug that in here and stick the battery on. Just plug that up. And we're already running. The oscillator gives you a square and a saw, but this module of switch seemed a bit dodgy, so let's swatch that out just for this other one so you can hear the difference. There's the difference. Right, now let's get a bit more exciting. Let's bring a filter into play. Just snap that in. So now we've got a filter. Uh, let's try something else. We'll get the, uh, we've got a delay here somewhere. Let's grab that and pop that in. Need to make a bit more space. Awesome. Right, let's see what else we can do. We've got this random voltage uh, generator, so let's plug that into the filter. And then we'll trigger that using one of these splits <laughs> from, uh, from the sequencer output, so we can get some voltage stuff going on. Oh, it's a bit tangled up here. Now I've got 
on effectively a sample and hold unit. Wow, I'm already having fun. Um, this is good. I mean, the only thing that you've got to watch out for, obviously, these are, th this is not a kind of cased up synthesizer. There are, there's going to be cracks and bangs and pops as the power goes in and out. But I, I haven't broken anything apart from that dodgy switch on the oscillator, which uh, may have been me getting a bit over enthusiastic. We've already got something that is kind of fun to use. But now I could just reconfigure this almost immediately. Let's just quickly, now if I come out here, I'm going to, let me see, let's put, uh, start the sequencer again. Running free. Let's put an envelope in it somewhere. So we'll put the envelope there. So now I've got an envelope, let's bring some noise in. Let's try something else. We've got a mixer here, so I could possibly get some modulation going. Let's go. Um, let's go the mixer into. I'm not quite sure what will happen if I go to the mixer into the envelope, and then run this oscillator into it, and maybe take a trigger into the envelope. I'm getting some sort of ring mod. Swatch out the sequencer and let's bring the keyboard in and do that. And maybe uh, let's bring the sequencer into here and trigger the sequencer off the keyboard. We can speed the signature up, or we can switch it into a mode where it just steps through every time I press the keyboard. Whoops. <laughs> is almost Im immediately I want more modules, I want uh, more splits, I want more mixers so I could just bring it all together. It's very quickly you're kind of getting into a kind of oh if only I could, if only I could do this and um, and that's brilliant because that's entirely what this is supposed to do isn't it? It's supposed to get you sort of excited going oh I can make this uh, but reconfiguring is just so immediately quick and you just snap it together. I mean obviously there's, like I say there's a bit of wonkiness occasionally but that sort of doesn't matter. I mean, it would if perhaps you were doing a live gig in front of a load of people and you wanted to use little bits as the source of your main uh, sound generation. But that perhaps would be a little unwise, I feel. Just a few facts and figures. Uh, essentially, the circuitry is, or the, the, the voice architecture is the same as the Monotrons. Uh, the chief designer, the guy behind uh, Monotron and the Monotribe and the Volkers uh, is also involved in this. And the, he said the biggest problem that they had was changing it from uh, the original voltage structure into plus five, into five volts. And that's actually quite encouraging because five volts also corresponds with the volt per octave that we get on, say, a Euro rack. Like, we have over here. And that would be my next question is, how can I get all of my other synth stuff playing with this? I mean, MIDI would be awesome, but I think let's, let's just stick with control voltages. I bought myself a breadboard kit, which is uh, one of these things uh, and a bunch of leads. And I'm still waiting for information on how I can patch it all up. I've heard that it might be possible to buy individual component pieces so you could stack up more oscillators or have more delays or what have you. And that would be awesome. I th immediately it sort of brings out the person who wants to circuit bend in me. I don't have that opportunity because uh, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm hoping 
uh, or in fact I know that what's happened with Korg is they've just released all the circuit diagrams for this stuff. So essentially they've created an open source hardware uh, format and you can download this stuff from GitHub. I'll put the links in the show notes um, so, so that you can see how to get hold of that stuff. And if you are in any way kind of electronically um, gifted or perhaps not, you can start tinkering and see what you can come up with. One of the things I'd really like to have seen is a control input for the delay so I can modulate the delay type because that sounds great. A couple of things I did notice, um, the battery pack did run out quite quickly. Um, I only use it for a few hours, I mean I don't know how much juice it needs. So I plugged a universal power supply into the main power, which you can see here. And I did find that uh, there's an awful lot of hum, which you can hear now. Uh, I found that quite hard to get rid of, even though I've gone into DI box and earth lift and what have you. So that might be something if you want to use it professionally from a power supply, you might need to uh, finagle around a little bit with that. So look, you can see it's not a fully featured professional synthesizer. It's a fun electronics kit, pretty much aimed at kids, but at heart, I guess that's what we all are. If you want to start getting into circuit bending and attaching this and maybe buying more modules and creating something, then this is a really good way in. And I think it could be a great enhancement for like a home setup. 159 US dollars, I think that's about 100 quid. Really quite a lot of fun to be had. And to be honest, uh, I'm... I just want more of them. I want loads. I want enough to be able to build some massive modular and hook it all up with my other kit. I mean, I think, you know, as the people get hold of this open source stuff and as people um, figure out mods and say, you know, attach wire here, then it's just only going to become more and more fun. But, you know, obviously don't buy it if you're looking for a, uh, a cheap way of getting a, a fine performance-based synthesizer to create super bass lines for your uh, productions. It ain't going to do that. Thank <laughs> you.